on here. Okay, well, back with another live stream. And I've got my, uh, I was checking my stream, it's still playing the music. I wanted to make sure everything was good on it. Um, okay, um, I've got me a new router. You know, I've been working on my Linksys router, putting DDWRT on it and all that. And uh, I uh, finally decided that it was, uh, it's got some hardware failure problems, evidently some components going out because uh, it would not get over. I didn't think to test it before it did that uh, on the wired because I just thought the wired part worked okay. But the wired wouldn't get over about 40, 43 to 45 megabits, mostly around 40 on my test, 39 to 40. 39 to 45 is what I got. And the wireless was even worse, like 19 and 16 megabits. Uh, I don't think the firmware made it do that because it was already acting up bad and that's why I had stopped using it. I just really don't remember doing any tests. I just got kept rebooting it and then I got tired of you know rebooting it all the time. I probably I'm sure I did some tests but uh, <clears throat> mostly what I would do you know whenever I have a problem is just do a, a test on my main machine instead of getting over there on a, another machine that's only connected to the uh, you know the other routers whichever one I might be <coughs> uh, you know uh, well, you, normally I, I just wasn't expecting the hardware to fail. So, but anyway, that's what I did. I tested it, and it it was doing that. So, and and immediately when I I had stuck it in as the main router, and and it's when I did the during those tests, I had replaced the TP link, the one that's connected directly to the uh, modem, the cable modem, and I have three. I keep three in a daisy chain. You know, each one plugged into the next one, and so I put it at, at the first one, took out the TP link altogether. And I had those uh, slow tests. And so then I uh, <clears throat> uh, put the TP link back and it immediately went right back to my normal speed, about 65 megabits on the internet. Uh, and so, uh, and the wireless was normal. I actually don't remember. I didn't test the wireless all by itself, I don't think, because that's a little trickier when uh, the way I have everything wired up. So, uh, anyway. So, but the TP link still has to be, the wireless will just quit, drop out uh, and quit working in the, uh, in the living room. It'll still be working in here, I think. Well, I don't use it much in here, so I don't know, but somebody will come and say, hey, the Wi-Fi's not working, you know, I'll have to reboot it. And, uh, and does it, it seems to really overwhelm it every time I do one of these streams, so I've kind of gotten the habit of rebooting it every time I get done with the stream, if I can remember. But that means I have to reboot all the other two routers in the daisy chain, and I have to do that every time. Uh, just pretty much every time because my server will generally go the router that <coughs> that my server is on, which is second in the daisy chain, the trend net will uh, the server will go offline. So it's a pain in the butt. So uh, <coughs> I wish I could afford it, but well, you know, you don't really see Wi-Fi routers with more than four ports. If you did, it would cost a fortune. So uh, <coughs> that's what I wish I had, or a you know, a good, like a 10 port switch that would get, that could get the IP address from the router would be good too, but they're not cheap either, so. And I already have all these routers. I bought them over the years, you know, <clears throat> as one would stop performing well, I'd buy another one. It wasn't that it wasn't working, it just wasn't performing well, and that's the whole reason why I went with DDR, WRT to try to fix that uh, with software, but it's, this one I think has a real hardware problem. I'll find out if the software improves anything on the TP-Link. Uh, I know it, it works okay other than it uh, needing to be rebooted more uh, all, so much nowadays. And I think that's because the cache and the, uh, I always forget the other thing. But anyway, the uh, it gets filled up and rebooting it will clean it out. So, um, <coughs> um, well, so hopefully I did a lot of shopping, you know, and looking and comparing and I had originally thought I might get a Netgear, but the, every one of them that were in my, I, I didn't really want to spend over $75, it, you know, 50 to $75, and uh, they all had, they were having complaints, you know, in the reviews about them dropping the Wi-Fi. I thought, well, that ain't going to help, you know. So the only one that I ran into, and the other thing I wanted was one that would run DDR, DDWRT in case I were, wanted to change it. It's even, even if I don't want to do it right now, say, like, while it's in warranty, Later on, I may want to, 
And so th this uh, D-Link, I'll show you, I'm fixing to get it out of the box. It uh, um, <clears throat> was one of the three or four that uh, would. A lot of the newer routers like uh, don't support it anymore, you know. Um, so um, so I ended up getting this one and it was $65, 64 and change. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I've already opened the box, but I haven't, uh, haven't taken you know it out of its plastic wrap or anything yet. So let's get over here and do that. <clears throat> and uh, I just left it in there just because I didn't. I just put it back in that box because I just hadn't uh, felt like carrying it out in the garage yet. But this is it, and uh, D-Link AC1750 what it is <clears throat> and <clears throat> see it's not too much on there you know the, the standard stuff they put on them tell you how wonderful they are and uh, it's a funny looking one um, you'll see it when we get it out I've I haven't seen it yet because I haven't uh, I haven't uh, you know pulled the plastic over yet uh, <clears throat> so we'll just go ahead and do it here let me see, what do I want? Oh, I was moving stuff because I thought I was going to have to, well, I might have to anyway. <clears throat> uh, scissors. I thought I'm, uh, my toolbox uh, was underneath my thing here, but I'm not going to get in there right now because, actually, this I am. I always like to leave that plastic on there for the stay on these things when I open them. Let's see, they, which end do I want to open it from? I'm kind of a right-handed guy, so if I can make it open on the right end, then uh, I'll just uh, do that. I was doing it, and then I remembered I was getting out, getting out of camera, getting out of frame. So I thought, oh, it's got the little thumb deal there. This may be silly trying to keep that uh, plastic. I think it is. You know, if you if uh, if you can, it can. <laughs> Sometimes the boxes are worth saving. Uh, you, I save these in case you know for quite a while. When you buy something like this, to make sure if you have to send it back, because they always require the box, original box, you know. But uh, it's funny. I don't want to try not to rip it. Contrary one to get out without ripping it. Didn't expect to need tools to get this out. But uh, the cardboard, there we go. Cardboard is so easy to rip. So, ow, and that's sharp. You stuck me. Got a cardboard cut, I bet. Okay, looks like it's got something that slides out of that box. <coughs> So, which way does it go? Like this. Solid black. Okay, there we go. My camera is not quite behind, but I kind of had to wait on it there. Um, okay, pretty good, pretty good packing anyway. Got another box here. Let's get the router up first. There we go. I thought I was going to have to pull that packing out, but uh, get these papers out. I'll leave them in the bottom of the mail. Let's get them out. Put them up here. Put my knife up. If I need it again, I guess I'll have to get it out. But there's another. Let's get this out and see. Yeah, that'll be easier. Okay, now. Oh, there's one more thing. A card or something. Okay. My chair is squeaking like crazy. It's driving me crazy. I bet it's really showing up in this video since I'm using the uh, lapel mic because I can't reach over here with the SM58 good. Now let's look at the router itself first. Okay, so it's, I already saw this. I knew I was wondering. Uh, 
I thought it came like that, but these, uh, I saw it in a video there. These things fold up and down, so I already knew that. But definitely a different looking one. It looks like a house. Somebody in one of the comments when I was looking at it on Amazon said it looked like, is that a spaceship? <laughs> I thought, first thing I thought when I saw it was a house or a barn. It looks like a barn. Wi-Fi names. Okay. Huh. Huh. Has a default password. Oh, it's stickers, I guess, that you can... Yeah, there's stickers you can peel off and put on it. I think. You don't want to come off of that. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see. Yeah, they are stickers, and they're stuck to that plastic. I'm going to leave them like that for now. I am going to take all that plastic off. <clears throat> but, um... So there we go. We got uh, yellow's uh, internet. Doesn't say when. It says internet and extender, router extender. Oh, you flip a switch to make it an extender. If you wanted to use it as a Wi-Fi extender, evidently. Yeah, router extender. There's a little dot by each one. Huh. That can, might make it a lot easier to set it up. I don't know. I'm going to use it as a router though, but if later if I wanted to use it as an extender or if it would be good. That's one of the other reasons why I wanted this one, uh, because it does that by default. Okay, reset and uh, oh, the reset, well there's w WPS, that button there is WPS for uh, wireless uh, something, in wireless setup, I forget what the word stands for, and then reset is you stick, you know, something in there like a paper, big paper clip or something. Okay, that would be factory set, I'm sure. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's see what comes with it. Ouch. Looks like we're going to get some basic oh, power, power bri a brick, <laughs> plastic brick, power supply. Oh, wall mounting screws and plastic things to go in your sheet. Boy, that's the crappiest looking Wi-Fi cable I've ever seen in my life. It's a flat ribbon cable. Huh. I don't see the letters on it. If it's supposed to be, I don't know if it's Cat 6. It should be. There we go. Oh, I got it upside down. Okay, AWM E21 S689 style 2854 degree centigrade 30 volts cable BO or 0516DO or 0 81J. So it doesn't say uh Cat 5, Cat 6 on it. It should be Cat 6 since this is a gigabit router. I think. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I'm sure they wouldn't give you one that wouldn't handle the, uh, you know, what it's supposed to do. I guess I'll go ahead and use it because my cables are all fairly old now. I imagine I, <laughs> I thought it looks, I think it looks weird, but I probably trust it a brand new one probably better than the old ones of mine. To go to the from there to the <coughs> motor. You can use another cable. That's for, <coughs> <coughs> for sure. <coughs> Just a second. <coughs> ah, a drink. <coughs> I whipped. I breathed in something that made me go nuts. Coughing. I might have been. I was smelling the plastic. I don't know if it was that or some dust or what. Okay, this is, um, I'm trying to get it to where I can read it. Well, it's tiny writing, even with a magnifying glass. <coughs> ITE power supply. Uh, let's see. 
Input 10, uh, 100 to 240, 50 and 60 hertz, 5, 0.5 amp. I'll put 12 volts, 1.5 amp, and it is positive in the center of the connector, which is pretty common. So it does have a regular barrel connector. Now, if I had thought, uh, if I really wanted to get into showing that, I could. <clears throat> I could have got out my <clears throat> scope, but I don't think that's a big deal. <clears throat> okay. Just leave that there for now. But uh, let's get the plastic off of everything. So I guess I'll put my box back in there. And I'm going to... You can almost see where I'm going to hook it up. I didn't think about that. That's a black box. That's kind of their styling, I guess. Actually, it makes it look kind of all right to, you know, use it to put stuff in, in, in the house or something. Uh, let's see. And then you got um, get your basic papers. It's got a. It's a GPL license for the firmware, the software, the operating system. It's, oh, look at that, microscopic. It's always wonderful to have microscopic paper written instructions. Love that. Okay. Yes, because, uh, you know, 30 years ago I couldn't have read that back when I could see everything. Quick install guide, okay. And I got it upside down to you, but uh, you know I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. Right, I'll just, I will use it, make sure I don't mess everything up. Go through it. Hopefully I know enough, I won't have to read through the whole thing. I've set up quite a few routers in the years. I bet your little note taking section. Gosh. It's like a little notebook. Half of it's a notebook. I don't know why you need that. And maybe there's something in there that explains why. Okay, let's see. Put scissors in it. Man, this thing, I don't usually move it in this particular way, this chair, and it's not usually making all that noise. It's driving me crazy. Put my structures up there, I guess. I need them somewhere where I can get to them. I guess I'll put them right here. I'm afraid they're going to slide off the table. <clears throat> I went ahead and uh, unplugged the... Uh, move my lower remote. I know I'll knock it off and everything. Okay, let's see. I guess I should go over that a little bit. I'm just tired of sitting over here. It's really <clears throat> an awkward spot, and the chair keeps squeaking. So uh, let's see. Well, before I move back, move around back over there. Let's get this plastic off here. I don't don't believe that would help matters any. I thought that. Okay. I'm gonna do this. Stand up. <laughs> A chair. I bet that's just driving anybody crazy that's listening to this. Driving me crazy. Didn't expect that. I know it squeaks, but it, you know I didn't even think about it. Let's see. Configuration card. It's the same kind of stuff. Oh, and you could write down your own passwords, I guess. Can't see it that good. <clears throat> see it has default names that actually aren't too bad the uh, you know for the the 2.4 gigahertz d-link dash 013c not that I would remember that 13 stuff but I used to give them my own names and then the regular the, the, the default password it says password instead of <clears throat> you know instead of like password for password or admin admin or whatever 
this is not in English. I was like, why can't I only read part of this? <laughs> okay, now we go. Yeah, you, it's a place for you to write. Default. Oh, okay, on the left is default, and on the right you could write yours in in, in the gray area there. Yeah, okay. That'll be candy. I suppose if you wanted to, you could put that in your wallet or something. So, oh, I see. Those stickers that are on the top, one of them is stuck right here on this card. So, uh, those will be handy if you're going to stick with that, but you wouldn't want to stick with that default stuff. It wouldn't be safe. Now this, I think I'll leave it stuck on there so that it doesn't get ruined because it's been half peeled and stuck on here. Put it in the book or something. I wanted, yeah, I think I'll put it in here because I'll be opening that book a lot and look reading in it. I'll just put it in there. <clears throat> Keep it there for a while. And uh, <clears throat> now, let's see. If I can get those to peel off, I just see. A, I thought. Oh, I thought that was a dividing line where it was, you know, where you could peel it. If I can find where it's divided, then I can get it all off in one piece. <clears throat> I think it was a dividing line. Ow. Bumping into my camera. Nope. Oh, I see it's a crease in the antenna. Oh, there we go. So evidently the dividing line is on top, which is easier actually. Okay. I'm kind of weird about that. I try to save all this stuff and if I do have to send something back, I try to put it back like it was. I always kind of think they might try to get out of it by saying I did I did something to it, you know. So if it looks like it did when I got it, then I feel like I have less chance of them trying to pull something on me. You never know when you're going to have to send something back. That's why I'm doing this video to... I, you know, I'm not really all that into unboxing and unpacking videos at all, really. Not unless it shows something to help me in some way. But, uh... <clears throat> it was just red, and it'd be my favorite color, but that orange is a little bit... It's kind of... It's kind of cool looking I guess it's all right okay let me go ahead and plug it into the laptop and then I won't power it up yet I hate it when people put twisties on righty tighty lefty loosey but guess what this is righty take off and <laughs> I can't even say it backwards must let's do it backwards what's wrong with people can't even put a twist tie on the right way I mean, there's only a few, even I don't care American or foreign or whatever, there's only a few nuts and bolts and screws that turn counterclockwise. Uh, the passenger side of a 69 Plymouth Fury, and I don't know what else, a few things I've ran into. <clears throat> and uh, that, went, that was their idea that it would keep the wheels, keep them from coming loose and the wheels falling off. All it did was cause you to break studs and have a royal headache trying to change tires, as far as I know. That's all it did to me. It took me a while. Luckily, I, when the first time I ran into that, I did figure it out before I broke anything. Okay. Boy, that's easy to... That's very... can't say that that's one of those. See, this one will fight you all day long. This white one. 
uh, it's pretty stiff but I can't seem to get it in the picture but that one doesn't <clears throat> okay now I knew those books would fly all over the place okay go ahead and get this backward twisty tie undone this is not the good those were better twisty ties they're worth saving this is those kind that are just absolute trash they're more like a, they feel like a ribbon I feel like they don't got no wire in them but since like I said saving stuff in case you have to send it back and what I'll do is I'll, I've got some, a power source over here I'll plug it into but I won't plug it into the router yet leave it on top of the router to remind me that it's not plugged in I don't want to plug it in until I get uh, you know look through the book a little bit and see what's what's what what they got you to do doesn't have any light on it or anything to say that it's on so and it didn't have any plastic on it so just leave that like it is <clears throat> now uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna move over here to my desk <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> just look through the book. I won't try to show the book I could, but. <clears throat> Let me see. But I didn't think about that. <clears throat> it would be useful. I could plug in my endoscope <clears throat> and probably should be able to plug it in and show something going on with my oh okay there's two ends of that wire okay. <clears throat> I was like I was looking for the my endoscope to plug it in and it was uh, I found the wire but it was the wrong end of it and I was the one that I have tied down I was like why is that tied down Okay, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> I can get back in. My chair wheels are worn out. They fight me like crazy. Okay, let's see. So what I can do, I think, I think, is uh, put my endoscope. I did this before. Put it on my mic stand. I'll switch to my camera one and you can see what it is I'm doing over here. Got my mic stand out. See, I'm not talking on it yet, so I won't be making noise in it. <clears throat> and I can put this. Problem is, see, the mic stand has to be right there for me to use it. Well, unless I want to do something like and not use my SM58 and talk on this still, I could do that. Let's see if what it would look like. It may not be worth the trouble because it's really a little bit low, even for the endoscope, I think. I may have an idea that's not working out. I am going to need my magnifying glass for me to read it. I know that much. Okay, <clears throat> I'll plug in the endoscope and see. It's pretty tricky to get a good... Peter's moving on me. There. Good. It's tricky to get a good steady endoscope video. Let's see. Uh, you definitely can't hold it. But what I'm thinking is, am I going to be able to even... Let me get on the endoscope and see. Let's see. There we go. We'll see. I'll show you what I'm trying to do here. We'll see. Oh, not desktop. There we go. Endoscope and... Hmm. It's actually pretty good distance, after all. If I can figure out how to get it orientated right. There we go. You know, that'll make me be able to read it. I hadn't thought about that. Okay, now if I can get it to sit there. I'm trying to do it with twist ties, we'll see. I was thinking I would use these big thick ones, yeah. I saved these big thick ones off of my 
coffee. Um, bags. I'll get my coffee in these aluminumized bags. They are aluminum bags, really, with color on the outside. And, uh, okay, I know I'm not done yet. I'll put two or three of them on there, see if they'll hold it. I probably could have done it with tape, but then that's a real pain to get off and sticky stuff everywhere. This actually has some sticky stuff left on it from where it was on the, uh, coffee bag. If I would have done this ahead of time, if I would have been thinking. Okay, now. Raise it on up. Spin it around. Oh, right there. I'm not sure. I've got a bit much. Been much cable out up there, I think. <clears throat> there, see if that'll work. I don't know if that's better or worse. It just seemed like it was really, you know, weighing down on the camera there and making it want to want to go angled even too much. <coughs> there. It actually works if I can get it to stay like that. I need a I need a quick clamps what I need. <clears throat> try one more of these things. I guess I'll try a small one and see if it'll small diameter twist to and see if it'll uh, cinch down in places where the other one won't or something. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what it is would help. might be good enough. Now, see so I can take it back off without any damage to anything. I think I can twist it. <clears throat> and it's now it's not too horribly out of being straight, so maybe if I can just get it to turn and stay. There, that's not so bad. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, now I can go to straight to the endoscope and I can read it. Yeah, there's a wire up in the middle of my view, but. Okay. Minimum system requirements. I'm going to move my keyboard a little more. There we go. That's not gonna... Yeah, that'll be all right. Okay. Ethernet based broadband modem. Web based configuration requirements. Computer with Windows, Mac operating system, Ethernet adapter or wireless adapter, Internet Explorer or higher Safari or higher Firefox. At least they mentioned Firefox or Google Chrome. Ten orientation. Already running into my keyboard again. Let's see. Let it sit up on the keyboard. Yeah, I wish I could not have to move this so much. DIR, that's its model number. DIR 8069, 869. Fast performance, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Okay. I thought this might be useful. Let's see. Come on. Order to maximize performance, orient the antennas at an angle. Well, they set it at an angle by default. Pointing outward away from the base unit. Yeah, that's how they are when you open them up. So, now, 
hardware overview. Let's see if there's anything in there. Let's see. Reset button. Press and hold the reset button with the paper clip uh, for 10 seconds to reset to factory settings. That's what I figured. WPS button. Press the WPS process. The, the LED will blink white. Press to start the WPS process. Okay, I'll have to slow down here. LAN parts 1, 4, 3, 4. Connect uh, Ethernet devices such as computer switches and game console. Power port, connect this power plot adapter. Power button, press to power the router on and off. Where is that? Well, there's what this is for. Power button, number six. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. Now see, there's a picture of everything. There's that uh, router uh, and extend, uh, extender switch I was talking about. See, now I could show you it in real life, but I'd have to move everything, so I'm not going to... I'll use the picture right now. We have WPS, the reset's number one. <clears throat> so, uh, mode switch, there we go. Select the router left or extender mode right to change the modes. Move the switch to the desired position, and after five seconds, the router will reboot into the desired mode. Hmm. Router is in the default mode for <clears throat> information on how to use the router in extender mode. Refer to the user manual located at so-and-so, so-and-so, dlog, support dlink.com. So it's talking about that switch right there, extender. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, LED behavior. That's always something that's hard to remember but good to know. Orange, solid. Router is booting up or in the reset her process. Orange blinking, that was orange solid. <coughs> Router's in recovery mode. White solid router is working properly. White blinking, WPS process is in progress. None. Off. Router is off. Okay, well, less lights and uh, different, a little bit different functionality before you start. <coughs> Uses with DSL. Well, if you have that, you can read that. I don't have USL. I have cable. Make sure you unplug the power to your modem. In some cases, you may need to turn it off for up to five minutes. Yeah, that's so that you can... Now, I won't be doing that now. I'll do that. I need to remember that. Uh, of course, you figure it out. I mean, if you plug in or another router, take one out and put another one in, and you're not getting on the Internet, then you need to reboot your modem so that you'll get a new IP address for your to your router from your modem because it actually has a, a little bit of a router in it too you can actually uh, if you plugged it in um, my modem that I have it plugged into a switch it'll do I don't remember 100 200 I don't uh, so it will give out that many IP addresses so, so many uh, if you had a switch I mean or do one you know uh, okay connect to the router and plug the power to your DSL or cable Modem, there you go. And um, I'm just going to go through this as it goes. Let's see, unplug the power. Oh, it says it again to your DSL or cable modem. Connect an Ethernet cable on the Internet port of the router to the Ethernet port of your DSL cable modem, like so. If you've never done it then, uh, on anything, then there's how you do it with this one. Um, that's the uh, Oop, I was going to try to just tilt it and it fell out of my hands. That's the yellow one that I've already got the cable in. It's taking so long to come up there. But yeah, it's marked in yellow so that's easy to tell which one it is. So I've already done that part. I don't know. Maybe I should have just. Well, you know, if I just quickly hooked it up and did everything the way I know to know, know to do it, I might make some sort of mistake. You never know. So I'll just go through the instructions. Endoscope. Okay, there it is again. And 
that's actually what I'm going to do is plug it into a laptop to, at first to get it to check it, you know, get into the admin, see what's in there, and see how I want to set it up. Okay, connect another cable. Uh, right now, oh, I've got that wrong for what I want to do because I'm not going to be on the internet. Well, I can be. That's actually not the way I meant to do it. Okay, came to. Yeah, see if you pay attention to the instructions, you'll see when you're making mistakes. Okay, so in my case, I need to put this in um, It's not up under the deal good. I can't see it. I was trying to see what ports were numbered what. I'm going to put it in one. Now that'll let me go from my laptop to the router. I had it wrong. Oh, that would be right. That's going to be right when I plug it into the modem, but I'm not plugging it into the modem right now. Now to get it on the internet, I'll plug this. This actually goes to another router, not to my modem, but that'll get me on the internet for now. That'll be, that'll be my way to test this thing. Those uh, feet on that thing are so crooked that uh, it sets really, really crooked, and I thought I keep thinking there's something wrong. I got to be careful with this white one that goes to the internet. It does the clips broke on it, so it will make me think that there's a problem if it comes loose. Make sure it's in there good. Okay, now <sighs> there we go. I'm not actually having to use my. I think I bumped into my mic and moved it quite a bit. Okay, let's go back to my. Okay, so yeah, reading instructions can help you with your bad memory. Oh, cam three. I was like, why isn't my endoscope showing up? Okay, here we go. Now, <clears throat> connect the Ethernet cable from the Ethernet port on your computer. I wish I could get out further. I can't get... It's actually just the right distance though to make it really show up on the screen though. To the LAN ports on the router, you can also connect wirelessly to the router with your computer. Use the supplied Wi-Fi configuration card for Wi-Fi network name, SSID, and that's all going to be already set up, and password of the router. Complete steps four and five before attempting to connect. Yeah, I might stick with the defaults while I'm making the video and then change them, you know, later, not on a video. Uh, plug the power adapter into your router and connect to an available power source, outlet, like <laughs> our surge protector. If the power LED <coughs> does not light up, Press the power button on the back of the router. So this is this way, you know, what they're talking about there. Your power on the wall, your cable modem, <coughs> your uh, new router, and the uh, one of them goes the uh, that's the power. And that's the WAN port or internet port, the yellow one going over to your modem. That's what I just had to fix. That is the other cable that is going, and I'm using their new one right now to going over to my actually to a laptop. So, and then after the router has powered up, verify that the power white is lit. Proceed with the router configuration. All right. Oh, let's look at this part. There are two ways to configure the router. A web browser, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, okay. This is something different. I've never seen had a router that could use a mobile app. Use a web browser from your computer. Well, that's what I'm doing. Uh, QRS mobile app. Use a mobile device with the D-Link QRS mobile app. Uh, refer to the QRS mobile setup section for more information. I'll look at that later. I saw one person on one, not this router, but another router saying you can't even configure it without a mobile phone and they were really upset. I think they sent it back. 
I would be too because that's not the way I'm going to be doing it. I can't see uh, well enough. As you can tell, I can't see well enough to uh, do all, anything important on a mobile phone. Web browser configuration. Open a web browser. I'm going to try making this a little lower. I can always... Um, Here's what I can do. I can put it down here. Let's see if that can be read. If I can hold my legs still enough, makes it blurry there. Well, what I was thinking is maybe I can get the whole sentence in the picture. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty a lot tricky, but okay. Oh, and open the web browser. Yeah, Chrome Safari. Go to one nine two. Oh, it's the same as my TP link. That's going to be a problem. 192.168.0.1. That means they're going to fight each other, and the wi the wireless is even going to uh, they're going to fight. So instant I turn this on. It's a good thing I started reading this. Instant I turn this on, uh, it's probably going to knock out. Usually what happens is it knocks out your Wi-Fi. It won't hurt anything on the wired because. Uh, it's it's plugged into not going to be plugged into the TP link. It's going to be plugged into the trend net, which is that'll make it the. Uh, actually, no, I think this might be the Netgear. What whichever other router it's plugged into, can't remember now. Uh, this cable that I plugged it into, the white one, it'll get its IP from there. So and it won't. So it'll and it they're all on sub separate subnets. They make their own little subnet, so they won't fight. Uh, they, it would fight if it was plugged into the TP link, though. That's what I'm trying to say. And it would just—it would probably knock me offline and just jack everything up. A lot, a lot will happen a lot of times when you do that. It will have done it enough times without forgetting and doing it. It will—it'll uh, work and not work. You know, it'll be intermittent problems, and if you don't remember what the deal is, you'll, you'll just be aggravated trying to figure it out for quite a while. Okay, now those pictures are small, so I'm going to have to go back up here so I can see them. Okay, select a language, continue, okay, wizard will step through your new dude link, install your device, configure your network, and Wi-Fi settings, set your router password, okay, so you're going to be setting a new router password, may automatically detect your internet connection type, uh, skip to step five if it does and if not then select your internet connection type okay makes me want to just go ahead well i can't uh i was gonna say it makes me want to go ahead and plug it right up to the uh modem but i can't do that if i'm going to keep making this video let me check my video right now um okay but just the thing that's worrying got me kind of concerned now is uh, as soon as I turn this on, I don't know if anybody's using Wi-Fi or not right now. If they are, it'll mess them up. And uh, even if that doesn't mess anybody up, then uh, it will. Uh, uh, let's see. As as oh. on, okay, that's back to where I'm at now. Uh, even if it doesn't, uh, you know, nobody's actually using Wi-Fi, then I went blank. Uh, Okay, the wired, it'll be fine, yeah. But the Wi-Fi, if I sit here and fiddle around with it as long as I probably would want to, uh, the Wi-Fi is going to fight. And I, I hate to turn off the Wi-Fi and do all that kind of junk. I mean, brand new router trying to figure out how to do that. Okay, yeah, you'd want to set it on most of... Most, uh, well, if your ISP doesn't use a DHCP server sending you out IP addresses, and they may have a static IP, and you have to know, know what, find out what that is and type it in there if you've never done it before. But I'm not going to go read every little inch of this from here on out. Um, DSL, PPOE users. With them, they're, they're saying use a username and password, so... I know in years past, some, some provider, I never had one like that, but some providers you had to know their IP address and put it in. Here it is. If you have a static IP, then you would, uh, you'd be like, you'd have a deal like that you'd have to set up. So you'd have to put all that information there. And for, um, 
Now, for both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz bandwidths, create a name for your Wi-Fi network. So, I don't know. I mean, it sounds like the wizard's going to have you setting everything up, and if, if it does, I'll just go through there and set up the way I want it. Uh, your wireless devices. I don't m mind at all it being on the same uh, IP address range as my TP link. As a matter of fact, I want the TP link to turn into the repeater for this. Well, no, I, well, maybe. No, I didn't. Um, but I don't want them both on at the same time right now during this setup time. Now, I'm going to have the TP link in here because. Uh, I hope so because I want all the because the Linksys doesn't work and I need all the and the old uh, I might not even need a repeater if I don't need a Wi-Fi repeater with this new router it's supposed to be have a longer reach then uh, I'm not re I'm just going through that and not reading anything uh, okay um, see that's the default well that's not the default that came with mine but. I don't know, maybe it's going to be in there and it'll say, do you want to accept this? Either that or I could use that sticker if I want it. I don't know. I'll see when I get in there. But um, I'll give it my own names, names I can remember, you know, and um, my own password and everything. But uh, let's go back up to that little sentence and see what it says. Yeah, for both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band, create a name for your Wi-Fi network. Uh, and a password. Your wireless devices, i.e. tablets, smartphones, and laptops will need to have this information. You see, that's entered to be able to connect and uh, <clears throat> do your wireless network. Now, see, that's the big thing. i got to do go around and change, or, well, some of them I just, you know, I need to get it all What I wanted to do is get it all set up with the new, uh, you know, the... the I have to write down the new SSID and the new password and give it to everyone else that uses Wi-Fi, or, or the other. There's only one other person actually, but uh, but there's more than one device. That's why I'm, I can think of multiples right now. But um, so that'll all have to be changed because I don't want. I mean, I could do like I did the other day with when I was uh, just testing things and give. I, I, I gave the the Linksys the same SSID as my TP Link, and it just works seamlessly. Could do that, but then it's the name is TP Link so and so so and so, and it'll just end up confusing me later. So I'm just gonna bite the bullet, as they say, and uh, you know change everything and uh, give it. Uh, I suppose I could give it uh, something instead of saying the name of the router in there. I could just say something that could always be used on people. I got the window open. People outside talking. All of a sudden. Um, yeah, I could check. I hadn't ever done that before. I always give them the name of the router. That way I know which router it is, you know. But if I was, the only reason I would actually want to give it like a, you know, Don's, Don's Wi-Fi name or something, then uh, is so that if I did want to switch back to the TP link, all I'd have to do is name it Don's Wi-Fi again and... Uh, you know, and uh, and it would and it would all work as long as I had the same password in both routers. Uh, I know it would work because I tested it out with the Linksys the other day. That's what I did. I, I gave it that TP Lynx and uh, SSID, and it worked. <clears throat> Just have to make sure you don't have them on at the same time. I think I. So anyway, uh, Smart Connect is enabled by default. If you want to have, let me see. Try moving this down again. I can't. That's such hard for me to read. Got to be hard on that video. Let's see. Smart Connect is able by default. If you want to have uh, separate Wi-Fi network names and passwords for each band. Oh, okay. You will need to disable Smart Connect. Located under Settings, Wireless, after the wizard is finished. Now, on all these, wi these wireless routers with Smart Connect, they said they had trouble... With their Wi-Fi dropping out, or uh, you pl you turn on one slow device, it slows down the whole thing. Uh, even though it's not supposed to happen that way, they say, uh, and so they everybody was saying, turn off Smart Connect and you'll be fine. And I've you know my TP Link doesn't have that Smart Connect, but it has both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. 
now we got a plane. I need to get on my other mic. Um, and uh, it doesn't pick up as much background noise. Um, so this was my plan. I thought, well, I'll probably I might see what that smart connect is like, but probably want to go to normal two separate, uh, you know, networks, uh, Wi-Fi wi networks. Oh, and then continue the startup widget to finish configuring the router. See the summary screen. Congratulations, you have completed the router installation. After the complete configuration process, the internet LED will turn white, indicating that your router is connected to the internet. That's funny. You know, everybody does, likes and dislikes different colors of lights. I really don't like the idea of having a white light. For, you know, green is good. Blue is okay, you know, to tell you that it's good. Um, red is not okay to tell you that it's good. That means bad, you know. Okay, QRS mobile setup. There's the page for that. <laughs> Do you scan a... Let me just read that first page and see first. Scan the code below with the QRS mobile app store or app store or Google Play to download it. Oh, okay. And then once the app is installed, you may now configure. Oh. Oh, that's just so that you can download it. You scan that with your phone. Oh, okay. Well, it's, I've used those before. They do work. You know, you can uh, get that app, iOS, Android. Get that app quick, quick and easy without having to go look for it. Once it's installed, configure your router connection to the router wirelessly by going to your wireless utility on the device. Scan for wireless networks. Go on. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to connect to it wirelessly before you can try to configure it. That seems, that seems like that could be fraught with problems. Yeah, there's the app screen. There's the little wireless card. Oh, is that where you... Let's put it back up here on the table so I can make that show up better. Yeah, okay, so that's... Yeah, this is not my actual stickers, so I'm not going to use those, but I don't want to show them anyway. But these are not mine. These are some examples. Uh, <clears throat> that's the little card I was talking about, the picture of it. This is what the app... Oh, that's like an example of some Wi-Fi connections in the area. So, yeah, I'm not going to go into all the details on this part. Let's see, once you connect... Start to continue, set it up. To re let's see, save it. And I guess the router would need to reboot, and then uh, so. And you know, I can just all um, uh, the pictures are too tiny, but the actual text I can just almost read that with my glasses without a magnifying glass. I'd really have to have a magnifying glass if I wasn't using this little camera. And then troubleshooting. Okay. So, I think I will, oh, okay, and then there's a GPO license for the, uh, so yeah, it has, evident, it's evidently got uh, a Linux firmware on it already. I figured it did since you were, uh, it would, you know, I found uh, a, w, a DDWRT firmware, Linux firmware for it available. So, and then there's all this notes. There's just several pages of notes. So, um, what I'm going to do, I'll keep wanting to switch to my uh, SM58 mic, but uh, really, I'm going to be moving around a lot still. So, let's just... Uh, See, I've got a big cable in front of my screen now, but I, I was kind of going to leave it in case I needed to use it again to show books or whatever. <coughs> um, let's look at that for a second. I didn't think about that. Let's see. 
the uh, GPL license the paper that I was talking about. Uh, D-Link GPL code statement. Okay, it includes code developed by third parties, including software code. Let's go ahead and do it this way then. It's kind of too small, see, to to be able to read it. It's too small to be able to read it like this, so this is better even though it's... So if you ever looked at... I can see kind of this stuff. This is an LGPL, so the regular GPL, which I forgot what that means. So this is just the basic stuff on that. Well, it's a written offer for GPL source code. I was wondering what that was. The word offer. It sounded like you know you're gonna get you could mail in for something or whatever. I don't think so. I don't know what that. General public license. That's what GPL stands for. Uh, okay. And if you don't know what GPL is, uh, <clears throat> that's an open source license, and that means you can uh, you could download the license. I mean the code, and you could you could. Uh, um, normally, with a regular GPL, you could uh, rewrite it yourself if you knew how, if you wanted to. Uh, LGPL is a little bit different. I don't remember. I've read about it before. I don't know. Now, here's the license. I think this is the whole thing. They're using the 1991 um, GPL. I think they're using GPL2, and GPL3 has been out for a few years now. So, And you can do that. You know, I mean, you can do what you want with li uh I mean, the, the people uh, the, the people that run the GPL foundation thing, you know, they, uh, they don't care, but they, do rec they, they think the three is better. There's part of what we're talking about. When we speak of free software, we are referring to freedom, not price. Our general public license are designed to make sure that you have freedom to distribute copies of free software and and charge for the service if you wish uh, that you receive source code or can get it if you want it that you can change the software or use the uh, pieces of it uh, in new program new free programs and that you know you can do these things uh, it's uh, you know it's it's they, it's about being able to give free software software away freely and share and co work together uh, but without someone all of a sudden one day saying, uh, taking your free software and, and saying, well, now you can't change it because I copyrighted it. It's a copyright to protect you from copyright trolls, basically. Before, long before this was made way back in the 70s? Yeah, 70s, because the 60s a little bit too. I don't think they did it back then. 70s, late 70s, or early 80s. Uh, anyway, you can, if you, wanna, you know, I'm not good with uh, dates and stuff, so so if you're interested in, if you don't know about it and you're interested, you can look it up. Um, but, uh, so this is where I stuck my little stickers, and um, it goes on, you know, to tell more about it. But yeah, this is, this is the thing I said was microscopic. <laughs> So it doesn't look so small uh, under that endoscope, but remember that's an endoscope. <laughs> that's a super close-up camera. I mean, there's you know it's not the most high-quality one in the world, but how to apply these terms to your new software? So I know this is probably really boring, but see, there's my fingernail and cuticle. That's see how small that is. <laughs> okay, so. Um, How am I going to manage all this? Let me get back on my, uh, you know, a while ago when I checked my, checked my stream, I probably didn't even get on desktop, not that it really matters, but that much, but <coughs> I, I uh, always try to get all situated where I don't need a break for a while when I start a video, but uh, 
Well, I've been going for an hour. It always takes me forever to do everything. Um, I feel like I need a break. So I'm wondering if I need to stop, take a break and uh, plug it in. I think I will. Since I went on and on about this, um, I think I'll take a break and come back and do the actual plugging in and running through it uh, on a new video. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I'll do that. That way, um, you know, people might actually be more likely. I mean, if they start watching the video and see me just going through all that junk, that boring junk, they probably just won't watch. They wouldn't get, never get to the part where I plug it in. <laughs> just quick click off. So um, I'll make it in two parts. No, oh, I didn't close the lid on my things. I don't want to turn them over and make, get, have them all over my floor here and under my chair. So I'm going to leave everything just like it is. Go take a quick break and then uh, everything will still be ready. So, um, you know, and then when I come back, I will plug him in or her in, whatever, whichever it is. I don't know, that one, that thing looks to me like it would be a guy. It just doesn't have any female looks to it to me. You know, no, no grace, no, no beauty. <laughs> it's just sharp <laughs> and sharp corners and, <laughs> and uh, fat arms and <laughs> legs. <laughs> How funny. Okay, so I'll be back in a little bit, and uh, we'll finish up here. Okay, it's done, little lot. Oh, music. Mm -hmm.